climber has to realize who he has working on the ground, who he has working the ropes, and he has to play that in consideration of how big of a piece he's going to take. If, he's, if he has somebody that he doesn't trust on the rope and that isn't familiar with running the ropes, then yeah, you're going to have to downsize it and take smaller pieces. You're not going to be able to take whole leads like I was taking. So the pull line set, we got maybe 45 or 50 feet of stick up there. You can see that the homeowner jammed rocks and concrete into every conceivable nook and cranny in this cavity right here. You see what a mess he made all those rocks. So I'm going to have to stand in the hooks and when I to drop this thing and we'll get it. I'll probably cut it right up there somewhere, hopefully above most of that decay. It's got a little side lean away from the house, which is good. And it's pretty straight. It'll go, even though it's a little, not the most trustworthy wood in the world, but it'll be fine. We're about to start the other two removals. We just had lunch, a little small lunch break. I just got done throwing a throw line into the one tree. I'm gonna set two lines on one throw on one throw. I'm gonna set two throw lines for the, from the shot that I just set. One line is gonna be for my climbing line. One line is gonna be for a lowering line. Basically, I'm gonna do the same exact thing I did with the other tree. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna lower some stuff out of the way that is right over the house to create a hole. I'm gonna lower the whole second tree from the first tree that I go up. I'm gonna get up into the top of the canopy. I'm gonna set set up my rigging system with my blocks and my lower lines and to get tied in about 100 feet up, and I'm gonna jump over into the top of the other tree and start lowering big pieces from over the house and driveway and wires into the second tree. I'm Murphy back with climber, tree climber Patrick Epps. We just finished the first tulip. We've got a lower, uh, we've got a pull line in there and it's ready, ready to pull the spar over. It's all brushed out and some of the wood's out of the tree. Pat, uh, we, we started taping actually at 9.40, I guess it was probably 9.50 by the time you started up in the tree. You came out of that tree about 12.30 or 12.40. We just ate lunch, it's about 1.30 now. But this is the new style porter wrap. What happens when the rope comes through here and is trapped there like that, there's just no way that it, the wraps can come off. It's a, it's a closed system. Wants this wood for firewood, so I was especially careful about setting up padding lodge here. 
and make sure the thing stays off the ground. It's going to be real easy just to slice and dice right now. There's no wood on the log. Don't have to worry about the on the saw. That's one down. we got two more to go. All these holding fibers, this one's actually still intact. I had to pull that one out. That held it. This is comprised the hinge, held this log in perfect line as it went right down parallel to the house. We have some nice padding logs here to keep it up off the ground. It's going to be easy to slice and dice, and uh, it was a perfect fall. Again, have, trusting your falling abilities is very important. Saves a climber like Pat You're having to take down another piece or two off the top of the tree. We knew we could get it where, where it needed to go. Okay, it's been a long day. This is the final cut to make. One more tree to put on the ground. See, I, I readjusted the angle on my top cut, and I had to cut deeply enough to make sure that my hinge started back past where this, where this cut it finished, which was right here. And uh, you can see the nice holding fibers there, nice straight line of fibers. Good place. I cut the one corner of the hinge off just to make sure the bar was longer than the hinge was going to be. You can see all the spots in the log where, where the piece hit. I was actually aiming for that little stump out there, and. The log hit, I knew it was gonna slide and roll. So, I mean, I, I knew it was gonna hit and, and slide down the hill. Anytime you're dropping a tree on the hill, there's always a possibility that it's gonna start heading downhill, especially when you have the padding logs down. It's gonna hit them and slide. The concern was that it didn't hit the house, which we were about five feet away. I knew that wasn't gonna happen. But you can see where I actually set this lower, this other padding log up, thinking it's gonna hit the here and slide down and land right on there. And you can see, if we walk around the other side here, you can see we left a little stopper nub on, on this piece here. And I actually cut another piece of wood up here to catch it as it landed on, on the smaller unit, to catch it and stop it from going here. But I wasn't counting on with that little tree there. It took a little bang, but it should be fine. So another thing, another, Thing to be concerned about again, having the years of experience of watching how trees react when you drop them on hills, it was very helpful here. I knew it was going to be close to the house, but we were past the house. It wasn't going to slide back far enough to hit the house, so I felt very secure and safe and, and confident in falling the tree in this direction. Thanks very much, Daniel Murphy. Hope you catch another one. I hope you learned something today. I certainly enjoyed it. Had a great day working with Pat Epps and uh, the whole crew. Thank you. <laughs>